Hello there and welcome back to Forza Top Gear Laps Rivals, the spin-off where we pit a couple of cars with common ground and close PIs against each other to see which one comes out on top. Today we take a look at two very unique cars that you'll only ever see together in the world of Forza. Firstly, the Cadillac XTS limousine. This factory built limo is based on the Cadillac XTS, a full size luxury saloon car built by Cadillac based on the GM Epsilon 2 platform. The XTS was available through fleet sales as a hearse and as a limousine. It's hard to argue the XTS wasn't a good fit for these roles. In limousine trim, the XTS makes use of a naturally aspirated 3.6 litre V6 engine, turning out modest but respectable power and torque figures. This power is put through a 6-speed automatic gearbox known as the 6T70, which interestingly was a joint development between GM and Ford, and this drives the front wheels, meaning the car doesn't feature an extended drive shaft. Inside, the XTS limo can sit 7 and of course can be tailored to your specific needs, with this particular car being finished by coach builders Royale. The XTS limousine was sold alongside the normal XTS from 2013 to 2019, and while it certainly isn't a performance car, that doesn't stop you from asking the driver to take a shortcut via a racetrack. Next up, the Polaris RZR XP1000. While it may look like an angry golf car, there's more going on with the RZR. Built by Polaris, who are known for a wide range of vehicles from snowmobiles to NEVs, the RZR is a sport side-by-side, -side, since going on to be the best-selling vehicle in this class. The RZR is available in many different variations, from the base Pro Series, to the XP versions, to even a variant built for the US Marines that uses a diesel engine and fits perfectly into an Osprey VTOL. Rolling back to this particular model, the RZR XP1000, let's break down the name. The XP or Extreme Performance is designed primarily for use in hardcore off-roading through trails, dunes and deserts. In short, it's the most versatile RZR available. 1000 refers to the engine, a 1 litre twin cylinder ProStar engine making over 100 horsepower, making it highly efficient. Power is put to all four wheels via a PVT transmission. Perhaps sadly, the RZR from factory is not street legal and is purely for recreational purposes. Still, unlike say a Ferrari FXX or Vulcan, the RZR is a relatively cheap toy, and one that in its natural habitat would arguably be way more fun. So there you go, two vehicles with absolutely nothing in common other than the absurdity of them being featured in Forza Motorsport. Despite that, the PIs are pretty close on paper, so the question is, which is faster. First up on the docket then is the 2013 Cadillac XTS Limousine, 304 horsepower, 264 foot pounds torque, 5,500 pounds of weight. Uh, one interesting little tidbit here is uh, this car is actually almost 500 pounds lighter than the Cadillac Escalade we had last time, which I thought was kind of funny. Anyways, uh, the Cadillac Limo, essentially when it comes down to these two, it's pretty obvious the way it's gonna swing. The Cadillac's mo uh, way more powerful, it's a lot torquier, but it's also a lot heavier so that's sort of where this balances out again PI wise these cars are kind of similar I, I don't know if they should be we'll get on to that in a bit but uh, yeah that's sort of the way this works anyways the XTS limousine I've always been slightly impressed with this car because stock these things usually drive pretty good and upgraded they're great I mean hell in Forza Horizon 4 this was the quickest front wheel drive car we ever had and I think it still is uh, and that was with a V12 engine and like 1500 horsepower, which is insane. Anyways, uh, as far as this one goes to drive, well, I'm pleased to report that it sort of kept its decent handling attributes from Forza 6. It's not quite as sharp as it used to be, which I think is perfectly understandable, but yeah, it is a surprisingly good vehicle. It's very good in the terms that it's got front wheel drive. I think that's a great idea for this limousine. If this thing had rear wheel drive, I can imagine it would be awful to drive, but because it's front wheel drive, uh, the power can actually kick it through corners a little bit, which is nice. Again, it's heavy, there's no getting around the weight of this thing, there's no getting around the size of it as well, which makes it a little bit awkward to drive around a small track like this. But there are definitely worse handling cars in the game, which I think is kind of funny. Next up, of course, we have the 2015 Polaris LZR XP 1110 horsepower, 72 foot pounds torque, 1530 pounds weight. Again, it's obviously got a lot less power, a lot less torque. It's not even in triple digits for torque. And of course, it's a lot lighter. Uh, do 
be prepared to hear the sound of that two-cylinder engine a lot. Uh, I wasn't joking, this thing does have a PVT, which is different from a CVT transmission. There's different mechanicals as to how they work. I don't understand it. But either way, uh, you'll hear the engine go. This car has one gear, it essentially gets the red line and then sits there and builds power. We've discussed this before on a few different cars and that actually is a good thing in the terms of this game because it's always making peak power which means it can be quicker. Though of course one slight issue is you can't downshift to get the car through corners a little bit better but that's by the by. Uh, the Polaris, I quite don't like the Polaris, it's weird again it's an angry golf car. I stuck a V8 in this once and it was terrifying. Although I didn't know at that time but I've since found out through doing this, uh, this car's terrifying stock too. Uh, it is very quick however it's very odd, it's floaty, the front wheels like to lift up all the time throughout pretty much any corner and even in a straight line the front wheels can sort of jiver upwards which means you don't have any steering for a while and only rear wheel drive which is terrifying. Um, yeah, and it also bounces, it sort of hops like the F-Pace does where it'll bounce through corners a little bit so it's kind of hard to get this thing exactly through corners. Essentially, let's boil it down this way, it takes you for a ride, but it's pretty quick when it takes you for a ride. As we'll see by the leaderboard, because it was the quickest card today, going to 420th place with 134.143, goes in between a Prelude and a Camaro. Interestingly, it's slightly slower than a Jeep CJ5 Renegade, which it's very close to PI-wise, and the CJ5 Renegade was also absolutely terrifying to drive as well, so uh, yeah, probably choose the CJ5. In 444th place we find the limo with a 136.866, interestingly goes in between the two Ford Escorts we've had, which I find kind of funny, and it also beats out a Jaguar Mark II, uh, a bunch of SUVs, it is a couple of seconds down on the Escalade we had last time, but I guess that's to be expected, but either way, both of these vehicles, considering how weird and wacky they are and how out their comfort zone they are, they both did quite well. So anyways, usually at the end of these episodes I formulate an opinion as to which one's better. And, well, in truth, it's kind of hard to do because both these cars are so out there in a league of their own. Ideally, what you'd want is a sort of mix between both of them, you know, the off-road ruggedness of the Polaris and also some luxury with the Cadillac. So I think the best course of action would be to buy a Fiat Panda 4x4 and take it to a coach builders to get it luxurily appointed. That sounds like something I dream about at night. Anyways, thank you all very much for watching this edition of Forza Top Gear Laps Arrivals. Do hope you've enjoyed. Join us next time for the next main episode, which is going to be on Creator's Choice. And then the Rivals episode after that, where we're going to be taking a look at two FIA GT1 homologated road cars going at it. Which sounds like it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. And also very fast, a lot faster than these vehicles were. So uh, join us for that. Thank you all very much for watching. And until next time, a farewell.